Hey guys, welcome back to the Capital Mindset Show. Today we're going to be revisiting an older company that we've talked about, and that is Carnival Cruise Corporation. So as first, as always, we're going to begin with the share price and the price action to kind of discuss that or have a little bit of a conversation about it. So let me take you guys over here, and here you can see the company is up 9.71%. Today's a federal holiday, so the market's not open, but 9.1% um, or 9.7% up on Friday of last week. So we're filming this on Monday. Now, the company, actually, if you take a look at the one year. Uh, it has not performed well at all, down 66.52%. Over that five year, you can see that COVID drop here, rise up here, and then drop again. I remember that there were some YouTubers actually talking about it and acquiring it at these prices, thinking, you know, it's going to go higher. Uh, a lot of newer investors will say, oh, uh, a stock fell uh, from 50 down to 12. It's going to recover eventually to that price. That's not necessarily the case. That's the point of this video today is to highlight that to you guys. And we have talked about this in the past. You can check out in the description down below that there is a video content library and you can see older videos about this. You just press control uh, F and you can find the video. So with that being said, I will be showing you the video in, in this video, but or just like a snippet of it. Now, one thing I'm going to highlight or one thing I'm going to show you guys today is actually all of the filings is we're going to actually tell a story of this company. It's evolution over time. I want to first start off with a little bit of trauma. I'm just kidding, you know, just using that word. But look at Citigroup. All right. So for those of you who are newer to the market and say, oh, well, something can just recover. For those of you who have been in the markets for quite some time, you know exactly what I'm about to show. But here we go. We're going to show those uh, people who maybe not don't know this. So Citigroup is actually not recovered <laughs> ever <laughs> since it's uh, highs of about $500 a share. What I'm showing you here is that Citigroup in 2007 is vastly different from Citigroup today, at least on a fundamentals basis, right? The business itself has survived and has continued as prospered in its own right, but the, the shareholders were essentially wiped out. Well, not fully because it did not go bankrupt, but for the most part, they're not too happy if their shares were, they were purchasing their shares at $500 and today it's sitting at less than $50. And you can also see over that time period, they have severely underperformed the likes of Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo. Um, so you can see that down there. The trade desk is for some reason being compared there. But regardless, I just wanted to show you guys that. So going back to Carnival, we're going to kind of extend this to a couple of key ideas. So with Carnival Cruise Corporation, we know that they're a cruise liner, right? I'm taking you guys over here to the whiteboard. And one thing I want to highlight with Carnival Cruise is the part of spending category that they are. They are de-spending. So de-spending, what does that mean? De-spending is discretionary spending. Okay, that's all I want to highlight. And then what we have is essential spending over here. So e-spending, right? So consumers, they spend on discretionary goods and essential goods. Essential goods is housing. So housing, house, food, and energy, right? And then discretionary spending, well, this is fun, you know, TVs. We talked about this already quite a bit. We talked about this when we looked at Walmart, right? We looked at Walmart's report. We looked at Target's report, right? We talked about this in, I think, a live stream or two um, in their own videos as well. Now, Target, Walmart, uh, discretionary spending came down. We also talked about this in the Best Buy video, the Best Buy video about the risks regarding Best Buy. Uh, so these are some of the things that I want to highlight to you. Now, there's even a key category or a key factor that people really need to pay attention to as well. And people who are investing in this, especially those uh, larger YouTubers, well, what they're not paying attention to is the fact that cost pressures, so costs are rising, right? And remember that what we just discussed, discretionary spending, the consumers getting squeezed. We've been talking about this channel for a very long time, the liquidity crunch. Uh, now everyone's calling it the liquidity crisis because they're just now discovering it. But uh, anyways, costs are rising. However, however, the, the Carnival Cruise Corporation, for example, is not able to extend those price increases because uh, so they're remaining rather the same relative or they're not growing in tandem. So let's go over some key concepts e in economics. So you guys probably remember this if you took an economics course. I can do better than that. Uh, that's not that good. So let's just do straight lines here and then another straight line here. All right, cool. So in economics, you learn about curves, right? Demand curves. We have inelastic demand curves that in essence, when you measure a price increase, right? The quantity demand, it doesn't change that much. Okay. So Q, QD does not change as much. The delta is not as much as the price, 
All right. So basically, it's a measure of sensitivity. But if we actually take a look instead at something like a cruise corporation, like Carnival Cruise, it's probably a little bit more elastic, if I had to say, considering competition, et cetera. And that's a terrible line, but whatever. So if you look at the actual shift in theory that you would kind of realize, the delta between QD, right, the QDs here, will be greater than the price difference or the price delta. Okay, so what, what we're basically measuring, for those of you who, are, who like math, right, is the delta price, delta price will be less than delta quantity demanded. Okay, and so when you have an industry that, you know, is facing that type of issue, well, then we have the weakness of cost pressures actually squeezing margins and them not having the ability to do anything otherwise. Now, we're going to continue this by telling the story through the financial statements, because if you actually look at the financial statements, you're probably going to see this too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the 2019 report. And I'll take you right there. So we have cash and cash equivalents, 518 million. And then I'll scroll you guys down all the way to the long-term debt of 9.6 billion. Okay, so this is uh, right before COVID. Now let's take over to the next uh, year. So we're at 2020. Uh, let's go down to the balance sheet. And let's find the cash, 9.5 billion. They're rolling in cash now. Now let's go down to the long-term debt. And you can see, wow, what happened? Now they have $22 billion in debt. They just had $9.6 All right. So well, COVID happened. The company needed to shore up their balance sheet. They needed to survive, so to speak. So cash is now sitting at $9.5 billion. They took on a ton of debt. Remember, they have to maintain all these ships. All these costs don't go away just because no one's uh, using their ships. So in a good time, they'll, they'll do fine. But in a bad time, mm -mm. so we actually take a look at that uh, operating cash flow. The operating cash flow actually dropped drastically to about six point three billion, negative six point three billion, up uh, down from five point four billion in the positive. And gap net income actually went from three billion to about negative ten point two billion. So think about that. So uh, in in a good time, Carnival Cruise is going to be fine. In a bad time, things can get really bad for them. Okay. So let's actually then finish us off with the most recent one 2021 okay so the full year of 2021 cash and cash equivalents has actually gone down to 8.9 billion and if you actually go all the way down to the long-term debt you're sitting at about 28 billion so despite everything it has continued to worsen. So things are getting worse for Carnival Cruise, not better. This is a bit concerning when you actually think about it. But when, when, you, uh, when I referenced the old video, which we'll actually get to in just a second, because at the time of the older video, it was trading at about 20-ish dollars a share. And we'll see what the model was actually telling us and some of the tools I was using in order to actually get to that perceived calculation. And I was actually being very generous in that video. So we'll say um, that the ones who are doing analysis and that you might have seen their analysis, please like remember that they did that analysis and kind of see where their mistakes were. And then you can just learn from their mistakes. Uh, I'm here maybe just pointing out that yeah, I was talking about those mistakes that they would make them. But um, here we go on, on this. So I'll just take you right to the video. So the title of the video is called Cruisers Are Gonna Cruise. It was posted on March 29th, 2022. I'll show you guys there. And so this is, again, when the channel was smaller. So it only got 403 views. Uh, so it didn't, you know, get well known in, in YouTube. Now, uh, let, me, let me actually increase the quality there so you guys can actually... Uh, see the writing probably better. So Carnival Cruise was sitting at about $19.25. Uh, I was being quite generous in terms of the uh, uh, assumptions earlier. This is, I think, when I went a little bit more, quote unquote, aggressive. Uh, but still, I was being quite generous in terms of recoverability. And so it, if you actually watch this video in, into its entirety, you would see that what I was calculating in terms of recoverability, I basically said they were recovered in two years. I don't think that that's actually what's going to happen. Uh, but even if they did, you can see the prices. And the growth rates, by the way, are the assumption of recoverability, then plus a growth of normalcy. So basically, the model is indicating to me that that's the growth rates. I, I show you earlier in the video like how I came up with those. But for the most part, these are just penciled out assumptions. And even at those assumptions, it was not a buy back then. You can see that the more probable scenarios are actually sitting at uh, where it is today. 
<laughs> so so today we're sitting at about nine dollars ten dollars and then we had the low probability scenarios which is where it was still below that price point and again there were people buying it there okay so uh, thinking you know it's going to recover somewhere to like 50 bucks okay now uh, I think I even uh, gave them a benefit of the doubt in terms of a buyback uh, rate so uh, yeah I, I don't think that that's actually going to be the case they're going to try to figure out ways to uh, lower that cost of capital and based on how much debt they have relative to the size of the company I would question their ability to continue to uh, raise capital in that form at favorable prices okay and then analysts at the time had a price target of thirty two dollars and six cents so I don't like to just smash on analysts or anything like that but uh, they their models can come up with a variety of reasons why that's their price target uh, they might be using a whole host of uh, techniques, okay? So it's not just simply uh, looking at it in, in one scope. And depending on their time frame and how they're looking at it, maybe they were looking at the momentum landscape rather than, you know, maybe the, the actual cash flows of the business. Uh, yeah, so it was implying a 66.55% upside at the time of making this video. But again, as you can see throughout the video, we were kind of like, no. So uh, nothing really has changed. I kind of maintain these uh, um, uh, estimations, but I would say that I would probably extend the, the recovery period for at least a couple more years. And that actually draws down the, the prices. So if you just take these numbers and just draw down the prices a little bit, uh, that would be pretty much where we would be at. So you guys can check this video out. It's in the content library. Um, it's in there. Oh, I don't even, I didn't even like my own video. You see, that's pretty sad. I'll just, I'll like my own video for sympathy. <laughs> so on that note, that's pretty much it that I wanted to cover with you guys here today. I just wanted to give a, just a quick shout out to Carnival Cruise Corporation. Talk about the company a little bit. Has anything change what what about the recovery period give you guys some you know insights or like some ideas regarding the business model uh you know in elastic demand elastic demand stuff like that and why carnival cruise is going to struggle for the coming period on that note guys thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys on the next one Bye.